I played a difficult game about climbing and it was way too easy. Well, for me anyways. You see, I'm a content creator with a past of completing just about every rage climbing game there is. So when I saw this game pop up in my feed, I knew I had to play it. Unfortunately for me, I was in the middle of becoming homeless and then becoming unhomeless, so I had to wait a week to play this. But now that I've had a chance to complete it, as a Fadian expert, I'm going to share with you my opinion on why this game is too easy. To start, I elected to play this game on mouse and keyboard, and the controls were very simple. Moving the mouse controls the bald man's arms, and the mouse buttons control the man's hands. Left click grabs with the left hand, and right click grabs with the right hand. There was also the space bar, which basically made your character pull straight upwards without having to move the mouse, and that was it. It was simply just a game about climbing. At least it was when I was controlling it. <laughs> Alright, I'll stop. How do you play this game? Left click, right click. That's it. And I just have to remember to not let go of a click. Oh, my hand slipped a little bit. How does the hand, how does the hand slipping work? Okay, so it, the more you pull on yourself, the more, pause. The more you like yank on a rock, the more like your hand will slip, it seems. I'm failing to see how this can be that difficult unless you're just like super impatient or something. You like wanna just like get to the edges of stuff. Am I crazy? Or is this shit just like not hard? No, me! You're not crazy. The actual core mechanics are pretty simple and hard to mess up. You just need to pay attention to your hand placements and make sure they're not too close to the edge of a surface you're gripping, where you could potentially slip off if your momentum pulls you too hard in one direction. Look at how even my chat has full faith in me. Reckon you'll beat this fast, you're good at these games? Is it really? Is it is it supposed to be hard? Like, is, is it easy or is it hard? I don't actually know. I was going into the playthrough fully blind, but because my chat was so eager to see me play this, they ended up giving me lots of tips throughout the playthrough, and to be honest, I didn't really mind because at the end of the day, I still had to hit the inputs myself. Well, first fall of the day, boys. The first one's always the worst or the best or something, I don't know. But after my speculation of how this game is going to be difficult, I started to quickly realize what was going to be the hard part of this climbing session, jumping. Oh, come on, dude. Like, what the f is that? I slid down the entire damn thing. I was kind of starting to get the jumping mechanic, but to be honest, I kind of just brute forced it and continued onward. Okay. It was here where I learned the important lesson of placing your hands safely so they don't slide off the rock. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My left hand slipped off. I didn't let go. Holy shit. Holy shit. My left hand slipped off without... I did not let go of that. Just to be clear. My left hand literally just slipped off, but I was perfectly swinging to get that. <laughs> After reaching a pool of water, this became my new bottom. If I fell in the coming section above, I would no longer fall down into the sea below from which I started. But I was going to end up in this new pool that I just reached. This becomes a common theme in the game. While technically it was still possible to lose more progress and fall all the way to the bottom, these pools essentially acted as checkpoints. Games in the Fadian genre do not have checkpoints. So this game's Fadian status was put into question based on this kind of map design. Some Fadians have what we call soft checkpoints, essentially little safe havens where you can take a breather, but the map design always reopens up later on to a point where you can still fall below this soft checkpoint and head tumbling back down to the bottom. Think of palm tree section in Pokestuck Map 1. It makes you feel safe, but as you progress, you realize that falling all the way down is still an option. You could argue that these pools could be classified as soft checkpoints because technically you can still fall beyond them, but this literally never happened to me and it's pretty clear from the map design that you're never really supposed to fall beyond the pools once you make it to them. Making these pools more akin to hard checkpoints, which basically misses the whole point of what a Fadian game is. But in my opinion, it's more of a who cares situation. Yes, this makes the game super easy and for us Fadian sweats, it kind of kills the challenge. But if the developer's goal was to make a fun game that's more accessible and approachable for a larger audience, then these pools only succeeded in helping that. Not everyone is a god gamer Fadian purist looking for a challenge to fulfill their sadomasochism. Big word, look it up. Personally, I still found the game to be a fun and enjoyable playthrough, and at the end of the day, isn't that what really matters? No, it's not Fadian enough, you idiot! <sighs> Let's just move on. I liked how the map design was adding in new mechanics as the game went on, like this waterfall mechanic, where the rocks are really small which force the need for precise grabs, and if you miss and grab the water, it yanks you downwards, forcing you to be accurate with your hands. Very cool. Okay, this is crazy. I love new tech, new tech, new mechanics, new mechanics. Love that. Evolving game. Ah, oh, shit. Nice. Oh, look at that. Helping hand. Oh, sorry. Grabbing, okay, grabbing the little... Grab, that was a bad spot to grab. The next checkpoint took us to a Roman bathhouse. Or at least I think it's Roman. Here we're forced to practice the jumping mechanic once more in order to progress. And it's also where the intricacies of the jumping inputs finally clicked in my head. Oh, gambited. 
You gotta cut the corner. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. You gotta... It's like getting over it when you do, like, the pull down. And it's like, you know, you have, like, a circle of a hammer, kind of. And you kind of, like, cut the corner and pull. You gotta, like, pull... You know what I mean? Okay, so in case your brain is normal and you didn't understand my understanding of the jumping mechanic, allow me to explain. In both this game and getting over it, you control the character's arms with the mouse. Both characters have a circular range of motion based on the length of their arms that limit how you can control them. Starting with getting over it, a lot of the time you're going to be swinging the hammer in circles fully extended in that circular range of motion to propel yourself with the hammer's leverage. But there's an interesting movement option you can pull off called a pull down or pogo jump. I don't really know what they call it. While it's useful everywhere, its best example comes at the anvil jump. While you could slowly position the hammer straight down above your head and then flick down to pogo to the ledge, there's actually a faster, more optimal, and honestly easier way to pull off this jump. First, you need to hold the hammer fully extended above your head but slightly angled towards the ledge you're aiming to reach. Then, instead of using the full range of motion of the circle to move, if you just cut the curve with your mouse movement in a downwards diagonal straight line, the potman will pull off the pogo jump with ease. The same exact mouse movement input is used for the climbing jump in this game, except it's flipped upside down. You see, after swinging left and right to gain momentum to hit the jump, your arms are in the circle's full range of motion, but this time on the bottom of the circle. If you're jumping from left pillar to right pillar, the input of your swing is going to be curving left on the bottom of the circular range of motion just before you go to jump. From here, you're going to start going slightly back down the curve to the right. But then, if you cut the curve with a diagonal straight line up and to the right, you can muscle your way horizontally to hit the jump. This should nicely propel you horizontally without spinning you upside down. Now, the other difficult degree of skill when it comes to hitting a clean climbing jump is the timing of the release of your grab and the timing of your re-grab on the next object. You see, if you release too early, you won't go as far to the right and not get enough power. But if you release too late, you'll kind of yank yourself backwards slightly, losing you distance and possibly spinning your character. In this case, we're letting go with the left hand and re-grabbing with the right hand. So left click is being released and then we're holding down right click to grab the next wall. So just to recap, to successfully pull off a clean climbing jump, you need to swing back and forth while holding the wall with one hand, cut the curve of the jump to get the proper horizontal pull and power without spinning, and properly time your release and your re-grab to the next ledge you're jumping to. It sounds super complicated in writing, but putting it all together felt unexpectedly intuitive for me. Like, once I made the getting over it connection, it was muscle memory in the mouse movements, and I just had to perfect my grab and release timings. While I did complain and hate it at first, I ended up really enjoying this mechanic, which was very lucky because the jumps are the only difficult thing about this game. And it makes sense. With such a limited control method, the only variable that can make the game difficult is the physics of the world around you. In getting over it, the physics of the leverage of the hammer gives you the acceleration and distance to make this game become free flowing and fast, which leaves you with a lot of options for movement. But in this game, the movement is slow and calculated, leaving the developer with no choice but to use the map design mechanics to enhance the gameplay, which he does, and effectively too. But in terms of movement, you're extremely limited on what you can do. You can climb normally, swing to reach a little bit further, or let go entirely using your momentum to fly through the air. So realistically, the developer had only one skillful movement gimmick to utilize and make the game difficult. Later on, there's a section focused around a couple difficult climbing jumps in a row, and some chatters were complaining that it sort of ruined the experience. But in my opinion, that section is the most spotty in nature. It's a section that forces the player to master the controls they're given and overcome a difficult climb. So to be honest, I don't really see it as a problem because of how forgiving the game is as a whole. So what if there's like five hard jumps in a row? If you fail, you just fall into the pool and try again. It's not like you're losing 50% of your progress and hours of your time. Sure, it's a spike in difficulty that kind of ruins the difficulty pacing because the section above is easier than the one below it, but it doesn't really ruin the overall experience of the game. Okay, seriously, that's enough on the petty semantics of the jumping mechanic. Let's get back to the climb. Uh, 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 uh. While these gears had me panicking at first, I got the hang of it pretty quickly. I fuck with this. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> no, dude. What the fuck? It goes so fast. <laughs> It goes so fast. And once I figured out the fast spinning wheel was avoidable, this section became super easy. Where the fuck are we now? Wait, Assassin's Creed? Oh, what the fuck is this? It's a huge ass jump to panties. Chat did not help me on this one, dude. And then for some reason, they were freaking out about that loss of progress. So then I had to stand on business while I first tried the previous section this time around. Y'all need to relax. Like I was gonna be stuck, in, stuck down there for like eight years. Jesus Christ. I'm a fucking learning machine once i know the information it's like first try the section it's like not even fucking hard who do you think we're dealing with here it's me after all i know it's been a while i know i haven't played a foddy in a while but like it's still me do i have to like go low oh i don't have to jump at all i can just reach if i swing ah okay now what 
Oh my god. As a guy who enjoys bouldering, I thought this was great. Yay, rock climbing. This is what I do in real life, chat. But like, not like rock climbing. Oh, bro, who the fuck is the root setter? The root setters, man, need to fix this shit, man. After a little introduction to the physics of the pirate wheel, I made it to the red steel beam. This was probably the only section of the map that I actually had an issue with. I just feel as though this mechanic stopping your progress dead in its tracks for a physics puzzle is a bit frustrating. The physics of the steel beam felt odd to me, and I don't know why, but it bothered me a lot. I must have spent 45 minutes on this thing, rocking it back and forth and having chat give me tips until I finally got a feel for it and grabbed the anchor. Look, I appreciate the effort to try to innovate and introduce a new map design mechanic, but I just didn't like this one. It kind of just annoyed me, unfortunately. Thankfully, these next few weight puzzles were great, so it made up for it. Let, like, here, cross left, reach right. I think that makes more sense. Like, cross left, reach right. Yeah, that's so much easier. I'm dumb. And now, the infamous jump section that everyone kept yapping about in my chat. The one that took Yardy Hardy five hours alone to surpass. The section that kills the game for some people. We already discussed the problems that this section creates, but for all the gripes I heard about it, I actually found this section to be kind of fun. Remember when I said the jump mechanic clicks for me? Well, we finally had a challenging area that tests the skills I've learned so far on my climb. This area is all about just optimizing your jumps and takes your full understanding of the physics of the game. The first jump requires a low diagonal pull to give yourself a slight height increase and a big horizontal leap so you avoid hitting your head on this overhang. Hand placement is important here for all these jumps, so you're going to want to take note of what spots on the rocks is the best to place your mounted hand before you start the swing. The next jump is more of the same. Another big horizontal jump that's farther than the first, but also lower. The best strategy for this one is to have your swing hand low on this rock so your reaching arm doesn't collide with the ceiling, pushing you downwards into the water. The third jump is kind of a reach around the ceiling of the cave. Hand placements are key here, because you want your hand to be as high as possible, but not too far to the right where it'll slip off. Then you need to successfully swing your head and shoulder around the overhang and grab the next rock with your right hand. This last jump is similar to the second jump, where you want to start low on the rock you're swinging from to avoid hitting the ceiling. This jump is all about maximizing your horizontal power, so a low diagonal pull is necessary to get the right distance, and then pray to god you make it to the wheel and don't slip off with the amount of downward speed you're gonna gain. From here, it's pretty straightforward until you come to the lamp jump, which honestly gave me the most trouble. This jump is basically a raw diagonal pull jump, where the angle of the wall on the left limits you from swinging, making hitting the correct angle that also has enough power to make it to the lamp much harder. It's an extremely claustrophobic jump, but the last real tough jump in this section. The rest of the section contains these blue mushrooms which were apparently slippery, but I didn't stick around to find out. The last jump of the section requires grabbing the center of this wall to avoid the mushrooms, and I nailed it on the first try and plunged my way into the last pool checkpoint of the map. Yes! Come on! Hardest part's now over, now time for the end. This is the worst part now. I don't think this is that bad. I'll be honest. Oh, the ice is slippery. That makes sense. The ice section wasn't bad, and honestly, I was just happy that I made progress and was onto new things. But seriously, why does every Fadian have an ice section? Am I right to try to swing here? Oh, doing it the opposite way is weird. Fuck, I was doing it to the right every time. Now I'm trying to swing to the left. This is weird. This is where we see our first right to left jump, and it took some getting used to. But what kept me stuck here for a while was this jump. <laughs> I can't help but feel like that was right. I just needed to get more left to right distance. The trick for this jump was basically the same gimmick. Start low, go for max horizontal distance, and avoid hitting the wall, stopping your momentum. This one was tough, because grabbing the ice wall too early stopped your horizontal movement, but grabbing too late meant your vertical speed was just going to take you sliding past the rock. So it made it a pretty precise jump. Even though I knew what I needed to do to hit this jump, I still struggled to recreate it successfully, which was just a skill issue. I happened to really like the mechanics on this jump. It made it pretty difficult and a very hype jump to hit. This was the other right to left jump I had trouble with. Oh baby, oh baby, we're in business. Then it was time to swing and pray. <laughs> what do I do here? <laughs> I'm assuming that was right idea, wrong execution, or what? <sighs> How do I do this? <laughs> oh, I'm scared. Yes, you son of a... Oh. A break in the snow? <gasps> what is this? I'm glad you came. What is happening? How the fuck do I grab onto this? What the fuck do I grab onto? A fucking cloud? What are we doing here? We're on a fucking cloud. Is a fucking ladder? What is this? Whoa, what is this portal shit? What is this portal 2 shit? What the fuck? Ah, ah, ah! 
<laughs> I don't like this game anymore. I don't like it. This game's scary. Be nice and careful this time. What the fuck? Where are we? What is this? I'm fucking climbing on the credits. My supportive yeah. wife. I should read this, I guess. Benefati for inspiring this game. Special thanks. Yeah. Without whom would not exist. Thank you, wife, and thank you for your suffering. Suffering, bro. It's only like a four hour playthrough. I'm like Dracula flow. To live is to suffer. To survive is to find. Some meaning in the suffering from F night shit. Friedrich Nietzsche. The end. Oh. True ending. Find the hidden true ending. In a way, this is the beginning. I did it. That was it. We did it. Easy clap. This game's not bad at all. All right, that was it. I got a fucking Burger King crown. I'm fucking done with this shit. Easy. My total playtime ended up being 4.8 hours, which really isn't that long. What this game lacked in difficulty, it made up for it in clever evolving map design mechanics, unique controls, and good vibes. I think this game does have its difficult spots, and the jumping mechanic could be hard to get the hang of. But what makes this game too easy is its refusal to punish the player for falling. Checkpoints in a Fadian game just defeat the purpose of the nature of what a Fadian is. A personal struggle to overcome a brutal climb through self-improvement and determination. And this game kind of just refuses to let you fail with the pool checkpoints. Well, honestly, it actually probably was the best option to limit massive falls straight to the bottom, but there definitely needed to be a bit more chump checks that could send you down at least one section. A lot of the time, Fadians don't really have more than one massive loss of progress, but the true massive failures come from the chaining of small falls on easier jumps from frustration or lack of patience. But hey, who am I to judge? If the developer's intention wasn't to make a pure Fadian experience, then it doesn't even matter. Even if I thought it was a not so difficult game about climbing, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on the game below in the comments and thanks for watching.